Today is World Health Day and here on the NDTV Detol Banega Swast India campaign, we've been bringing you special programming on health and hygiene through the day and access to affordable and acceptable health care. We're talking now with Dipali Khanna, Vice President at the Rockefeller Foundation, to talk about how the foundation is working towards sustainable development goals with different partners on ground. Dipali, thanks for joining us today. Earlier today, we had Dia Mirza talking to us about how the health of humans and the planet are intertwined. How do climate change and rise in temperature and rainfall affect the cycles of epidemics? Thank you for having me, Ambika. Dia is absolutely right. Climate change and health are intrinsically linked. Let me tell you how. As temperatures continue to rise, there's an increased risk of heat-related illnesses such as heat stroke and dehydration particularly for vulnerable populations such as the elderly, children, and those with pre-existing medical conditions. Climate change can influence the spread of infectious diseases such as malaria and dengue fever by altering the habitat and disruption of disease-carrying organisms such as mosquitoes and ticks. And we are seeing warmer temperatures in India and elsewhere make conditions more favorable for mosquitoes. Climate change can impact food production and availability leading to food insecurity and malnutrition. It can also affect water quality and availability, increasing the risk of waterborne diseases such as cholera and diarrhea. Climate change can have a significant impact on mental health by causing stress, anxiety, depression, and trauma, particularly among those who have experienced extreme weather events, such as temperatures rising to 50 plus degrees and flash floods. Dipali, who is at risk with climate change and why is that? So Ambika, nobody is really immune to climate change, whether you're poor or rich. Climate change is affecting everybody. It poses a significant risk to people in communities worldwide, but its impact is not evenly distributed. The most vulnerable ones are inadvertently people from the global south. The continuous climatic events ranging from floods to heat waves and earthquake are observed in these nations. It's a steep irony because the countries that have contributed the least to the climate crisis are now at most risk. The most vulnerable are sports skilled farmers, coastal communities, indigenous people, low-income communities, and most importantly, women and young girls. Dipali, when you start mapping rising temperatures or changing weather patterns or even rainfall, how does the data help in imagining solutions or predicting situations and acting preemptively? So really, the data on rising temperatures, changing weather patterns and rainfall, as you said, can be used to inform decision making and planning processes for really mitigating and adapting to the effects of climate change. For example, mapping rising temperatures can really help us identify areas that are particularly vulnerable to heat-related health risks such as the elderly population or low-income communities without access to infrastructure that support their resilience to climate-related shocks. Similarly, mapping changing weather patterns and rainfall can help us anticipate and prepare for extreme weather events, such as floods and droughts. This can involve improving infrastructure and building systems to really withstand severe weather, as well as implementing early warning systems and evacuation plans to minimize the impact of human life. Thank you so much, Dipali, for joining us today.